Hi, and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Today, we'll talk about the informed consent and what a monitor has to keep in mind. More after the break. The monitor has always a lot of things to do at each visit at a site. Since he often does not manage everything, therefore, priorities must be set. The top priorities are actually clearly set by ICHGCP, but are often not understood. So here, once again very clearly, the top priorities of a clinical trial are to ensure patient safety and rights. So you first have to check, have all, and we would like to emphasize this here once again clearly, have all patients according to good clinical practice signed the informed consent form before any study activity. You should also not check the safety aspects beforehand, because you cannot be sure that the patient has consented to allow you to look into his or her personal medical records. Make sure that the version number in the header or footer of the document is correct. Is it the version that has been approved by the Ethics Committee or is it the most recent document? If, for example, you store an updated version of the patient information in the investigator folder, you should cross out the cover page of one of the non-current patient information documents. To do this, write version not current or version obsolete and sign and put the date next to it. This obvious marking prevents the trial site from accidentally selecting an older version of the patient information to inform a patient. Also remove all copies of the old patient information except the one you have marked accordingly. Make sure that current versions of all documents are available at the site. Patients who are already in the trial and have already signed a declaration of consent form must sign this form again as soon as a new document contains essential information for the patient, the new document has been approved by the ethics committee and the patient is still in the study. In long-term studies, it may therefore happen that some patients have to sign several consent forms. Check whether the information and consent process has been clearly documented in the medical record. The documentation should not just consist of the sentence, patient has been informed and has given consent. It can be assumed that the patient also has questions and that the investigator answers them. This conversation should also be found in the medical record at least as a summary. Since the time of consent is essential, therefore, be critical with it. If you consider the handwriting, the date of the doctor and the patient may look the same, then the investigator may have prescribed the date. Even if there was a good intention, you should inform the doctor that this is not in accordance with the rules, because it is no longer possible to determine whether the patient was really included before the first study activity. Another mistake that is noticed very often is that the color of the pen is different between the signature and the date. In this case, the study nurse may have already specified the date for the doctor and the patient. This should also be discussed with the investigator immediately to avoid repetition. Particularly in the case of updated patient information for which the informed consent form must be signed, it must be ensured that patients receive the information promptly. This is often forgotten by the investigators and it takes up to six months or even more before the patient signs the new informed consent form. In any case, this is not acceptable. Even if the patient only needs to come to the trial site infrequently because the frequency of visits is very low, the investigator team must think of ways to get the information to the patient as quickly as possible. Remember that for studies with minors, both legal representatives, usually both parents, would have to sign the consent form. Both would have to sign before any study activity. In practice, this is often rather difficult because mostly only the mothers with their children come to visit pediatrician and the doctors fear that after the mother has already given her consent, the father may still refuse to admit the child. Therefore, it sometimes happens that only the mothers have signed. In this case, make it clear to the investigator that this is not acceptable. Even if children cannot be included, 
the legal rights of minors must not be violated. In the event of an inspection, the inspector would certainly face big problems with such violations, and you as well if you had not documented these violations and correspondingly applicable corrective and preventive actions. The presumed will of the minor should also be documented. For children who can write their names, a declaration of consent appropriately designed for the children should be signed. If this is not the case, the doctor should write a corresponding note in the medical file. If you monitor studies in the ophthalmological field and the study patients cannot see well, you must still make it 100% sure that all information has been understood by the patient. In this case, an independent witness would have to help educate the patient, read the patient information aloud, and confirm this by signing the informed consent form. Everything you check should also be documented. If the monitoring report does not contain a list of the consent forms that have been checked, you should create your own list in which you document exactly when you have checked which version of the patient consent form, so that you do not check the same information again and again. You should also document when the informed consent forms were signed by the patient and investigator, and when the first study relevant activity took place. If you write this information down systematically, you will find mistakes more easily. So much about the informed consent and what a monitor has to keep in mind. We hope that we could give you some interesting information and look forward to see you next time.